This is Professor Mike Ventola from Sand Hills Community College bringing you Grass of the Week. Welcome. Grass of the Week. This is probably my most favorite grass. We're going to talk about actually more than one grass today, but we're going to lump them together for identification purposes as the Festuca species. That's going to be all of the fine fescues that are commonly used in North Carolina and all over the world. Uh, we talked about last week tall fescue that was Festuca arundinacea. Uh, the fine fescues look nothing like the tall fescues. The fine fescues we're going to talk about four different types but again keep them together we're just going to use Festuca SPP for, so the genus is Festuca, and the species, or the genus is Festuca, right here, and the species is going to be SPP for our purposes. Um, but we're going to talk about the red fescues, creeping red fescues, Festuca rubra, creep, chewing fescues, Festuca rubra also, variety commutata, you won't be required to know that on a test, sheep fescues, and hard fescues, and we'll show an example of those. But as you're going to tell from the lecture and then from again looking in lab, these grasses are very difficult to tell apart and in fact without a bioassay, without taking cells, grinding them up and running a gel, it's very very difficult to tell the difference between these two and you don't need to because um, we're going to use blends and things to try to get the benefits, beneficial qualities of, of all these grasses. But now off a picture here to the home of golf, you can see this putting green, uh, most of the grass on here is fine fescue. So uh, there is some uh, Poetrivialis, some bluegrass in the mix, but you can see these very fine leaf blades can make an excellent putting surface um, at the home of golf if you under the right conditions. Um, one of the weaknesses of this grass, and, and you'll see whenever it's been tried to be used in the United States for this purpose, golf cart traffic tears it up. So it does not take any shearing at all, the fine fescues. But at St. Andrews, where they don't have golf carts, where uh, the worst traffic it's going to get is a trolley. Um, it makes for a magnificent putting surface. Here most recently at the 2007 US Open at Oakmont, you can see in the rough, um, this is another fine fescue um, grown up uh, to provide this nice beautiful golden seed heads um, for, the, for the tournament. So, I want you to get your book, and we'll see. We're going to find the, the fine fescues. That's on page 13. So, we're going to go through and look at our vernation. So, our vernation is folded. The ligule is short. Um, 0.3 millimeters membranous, but again, we won't be looking at this. This is a grass we're pretty much going to tell what it is from its growth habit and also from its leaf tip, leaf which is very, very fine. Very little oracle present. Growth habit, it's a bunch type, except the creeping red fescues, but really even the creeping red fescues um, they, they grow, they have some rhizomes, but they're very short and they still act like a bunch type grass. They come outside the sheath and a new tiller comes up, but it's not really uh, a rhizome that I've seen, maybe a little bit, maybe half an inch, but nothing like the rhizomes that you're going to see when we start talking about the warm season Bermuda and zoysia grasses. An open sheath. Uh, various collars because we're talking about more than one species here but the blade it's a sharp point and it's very very thin so make sure you see this in lab um, and it should be very easy to tell uh, the, the fine fescues 
Um, they can grow out in the sun a little bit. This is a variety trial at the old Lake, uh, not at Lake Wheeler, but at the old research station in, in downtown Raleigh at NC State. And you can see these fine fescues, many different plots of fine fescues here. Um, this trial did not last long. It was, it was seeded that year and looked pretty full, but these grasses go downhill rapidly. Um, there's a lot of problems with them, particularly in the sun, but in the shady areas, you can find a place for them. They cannot be over-fertilized. If you over-fertilize a fine fescue, it will almost grow itself to death, and weeds will come in, and we're going to see some pictures later where this is a difficult grass to grow in North Carolina. You need really cool, really naturally shady conditions, uh, which is not North Carolina, to grow this grass efficiently and for it to have find its niche. So... All of the fine leafy fescues are going to be lumped into this category. They have a uniform texture. They require very low nitrogen. In fact, you can kill them with excessive nitrogen. They're excellent for shady situations when it's dry. Shady wet, we would use Poa trivialis. For shady wet, but for shady dry, the fine fescues are going to be our, our mix. And in fact, in most of the lows or when you get a, a mix of grasses, it's a sun and shade mix. Well, for the sun, they're going to have the tall fescue and Kentucky bluegrass. And for the shade, they're going to have some of the fine fescues in there. Um, one caution on your exam. Um, when you go to do your lab practical, be careful. Don't, if the grass, I'll try not to have the grasses dried out. And I know George or Lee or any of your lab instructors will. Um, try to have the grasses water, but if a ryegrass or a bluegrass gets drought stressed, the leaf will roll and it will look much more like a tall fescue, like a fine fescue, than when it is fully irrigated. So you do want to be careful of that. And it, you can see, even in this situation, you'd think this is a low maintenance situation, but we've got this is Oakmont, and we've got actually two spray hawks, and they spray hawk this all of these broadleaves out of here. So it is work to, to keep the, that, that cleaned up. And this is not, this is a grass we're going to talk about later. This is red top, actually. But the, the, the tall fescues in there make a beautiful look. Um, again, a treeless golf course. This windswept uh, swept look allows, allows the elements to come in and makes for a beautiful golf course. But it's not the easiest golf course in the world. And, and the fine fescues are also used sometimes in the roadside mix with wildflowers. You, would, you could see wildflowers coming up in here, and that's quite attractive for the drive-by. But again, lots of it's got a little bit more open canopy, and sometimes you can get some um, weed contamination. Uh, creeping red fescue. So there's a Festuca rubra. This is the one that has a, a little bit of rhizomes growing them has a high sheet density. Uh, the new blades grow outside the sheath. So I think that that's what it is. It's not really um, new blades. It, it just tillers kind of aggressively. Um, they're, they're very weak rhizomes. It's not wear tolerance, particularly not cart or what I would call shear, shear resistant. Um, car traffic's really going to hammer it, and you're going to get Poe annual or one of the other grasses that likes a more compacted area. But it is excellent in shady areas. We, we see that uh, today, that this is where it persists in cemeteries and in home lawns under big trees. We can have fine fescue. It has been there for a long period of time. The hard fescues um, have tufted roots. Uh, dense roots, a folded vernation. Uh, these are the ones that are used most often in wildflower mixes. You can see in North Carolina, you're going to get crabgrass fresher and you're going to get other stuff in there because it's a little more open than the creeping red. This is a low maintenance shade grass. Here's another one. This is one that we found a blue fescue. And um, it was put in a variety trial by an old friend of mine, Rich Hurley. And then the superintendent left that it was put in, and uh, it was a bit, they weren't allowed back. And then 10 years later, another superintendent came in. He said, oh, we got this variety trial. They called up a trolley. They came back. They said, saw this grass. It was beautiful, beautiful blue. That's why it's called azure. Um, but they don't know which kind it is. So I suggest to you, if you want to use fine fescues, that you go to some of these field days, and you look at the grass. You go to field days near you. Go to field days away. Read the research. There's a lot of variability in the fine fescues, and you can find great grasses for your 
different situations. Just don't use them in a high maintenance situation. But it's a neat grass, and I think a home lawn in North Carolina could be done with this if you were able to do use the weed control and also able to have enough uh, enough confidence in yourself not to over fertilize these grasses. And we'll end with this picture. So uh, even though they they seem low maintenance, we have these beautiful areas. Um, the guys they the, we saw those guys were spray hawking, and then this guy's coming in here, and he's he's uh, weeding out all the weeds. So quite a bit of work had to be done to give it this unworked look. So there's there's no silver bullet in turf, but this is uh, one of my favorite grasses, and also Dr. Jim Murphy's uh, favorite grass. And Jim was my major professor at Rutgers, and I'm gonna play a little discussion that I had with him about fine fescue because fine fescue is also one of his favorite grasses. So thanks for listening and we'll talk to you next week. What I want to do is talk a little bit about fine fescues and I know there's a bunch of them but what, what way do you use to identify the different fine fescues Jim? Well fine fescues are uh, the general group is pretty easily classified by the width of the leaf blade and uh, the fact that it's quite narrow and uh, extremely fine and hence the name fine fescues. It gets a little more challenging to break down the different species within the, the classification of fine fescues. Yeah, almost and impossible, I remember. And it becomes very challenging. Yeah, we had that, that test that Dr. Duell had put out when I was uh, working with you and we couldn't figure out what was what without a genetic assay, basically. Yeah, you, uh, you need to use uh, certain characteristics to you can use things like rhizome development to break out the creeping red fescues from the chewing fescue. And uh, the hard, um, depending on the time of the year, sometimes color helps out with distinguishing between hard and chewing. Those are both the bunch type of grasses. Now, what use do you see or the place to use uh, fine fescues? Fine fescues for us here in the northeast is a very good uh, dry soil and shaded environment grass. A combination of fairly dry conditions and shade uh, seem to suit that species quite well. It do, does less well in the sun, but it can do reasonably well in the sun, but uh, sometimes it gets a little too harsh for it in the full sun. Yeah, so that was, you're anticipating my next question. Where, where are some places where you think it's a big mistake to use fine fescue? Uh, the full sun uh, can be an issue. Places uh, where the soil is going to be wet at certain times of the year, Fine fescues don't like to have what some people refer to as wet feet or uh, you know wet soil condition where the roots sit and under saturated or nearly saturated conditions for a long period of time. Cool. Now, do you have? I know uh, fine fescue. When I was working with you, Michigan State was one of your favorite grasses. Do you have a, a favorite fine fescue story? Well, uh, I actually, uh, as a kid, used to uh, play wiffle ball and baseball in a lot across the street from my house. And Underneath one of the shade trees alongside our early blade, there was a patch of fine fescues that I used to enjoy kind of laying down on and sitting on. And at the time, I had no idea what I was uh, <laughs> looking at. But uh, as time came along, I uh, became aware that I was looking at fine fescues. So it was one of my early early recollections of uh, recognizing a grass, even though I didn't know what it was, and, and enjoying it. Great. Yeah, I, I remember when I went to Scotland just to see fine fescue mowed at putting green heights and what an amazing golf surface it was. So it's one of my favorite grasses also. It can be, yes. Um, and then uh, through your research and some stuff you're doing, what do you think the future of fine fescues is? Well, I think that uh, the future, it's uh, often the future. It's not something that's going to happen in a year or two. But I think uh, uh, we'll find that fine fescues, as they make them more heat tolerant, there'll be better grasses for sunnier areas, um, and if anybody wants to put the time and uh, selection into it from a breeding standpoint, uh, I think it could be a very useful species under lower mowing conditions if if someone wants to put the time into trying to develop that grass, but they're excellent soil stabilization grasses for low maintenance utility turf uh, at this point, and um, I think they do have the potential to work in the finer turf situations. But in our climate, it's going to take a little more uh, breeding effort to make them a little more tolerant to the heat. Thanks, Dr. Murphy. It was great talking to you, and look forward to seeing you in the future. That's it for Grass of the Week for Fine Fescues. 